Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live, Season 3, Episode 53, Replay, Very Special Guest, Kelly Shores. Back on May 19th, Ron Brown, Marcus Crawford, and I had the privilege of having Kelly Shores from Ready, Set, Drone on. Anytime we have Kelly on, it is a wonderful evening, and we had a lot of great questions and answers that evening. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and roll that broadcast in its entirety. This has been set as a premiere, so what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to interact with each other as a chat like it would be on a normal episode. So here's the broadcast. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live, Season 3, Episode 20. And if I have to introduce our very special guest, shame on you today and twice on Sunday. It's Kelly from Ready, Set, Drone. Kelly, how are you this evening? Fantastic. I could be, uh, I, I couldn't be in a better spot and happy to be with you guys. Well, we're, we're very happy that you're with us this evening. Ron, how are you this evening? Uh, well, Bill, um, we, I still got that tropical storm offshore here, so it's been uh, a very windy day today, so much that you don't even want to you know, venture too far from the house because it's that windy. Oh, wow. Yep. yep. Marcus, how are you, sir? Yeah, do, doing very well. Raining here as well. I, I would love to get back out to the Snake River Canyon with that Mavic Air too, but uh, no such luck. Too much wind and rain. No uh, rain. Few days, uh, we're going to get back out there. We wow. need to take a trip down. We need to take a trip down to Austin to get that good weather Kelly's enjoying. Today, today would have been. I, I actually, um, my my work has been slow and it's kind of picking up. So today was like one of the busiest days I've had in weeks, which was great. You know, I, I needed it, but but uh, but no flying for me today. Yeah, see, I had the same thing. My my work was. I was pretty busy, and I had a pretty pretty busy pace day today. And it's it's really kind of you kind of interesting for me because my wife's working from home too. So it's kind of like you know the two two separate environments and, and everything, and try not to cross paths and everything. So, but the printer is in where she's working, so a lot of times I have to go grab stuff off of that. <laughs> you so, find yourself in the back of Zoom calls a lot. Yeah, I mean it's like it's like hello, and it's just well, I've heard <laughs> this was funny. I heard on the news tonight. There are people that have been trying to crawl under the camera and they see people crawling on the floor trying to <laughs> avoid the Zoom meetings. I mean, this is just it's just absolutely hilarious. Um, I sent Ron and Marcus a and this was funny. There's this uh, family and I think they're from North Carolina and they've been doing parody videos and they did one and it was um, quarantine's not quite over, but it was done to Michael Jackson's. Um, help me out here, guys. Beat it, uh, Billy Jean. Billy Jean. Billy Jean. Oh, nice. oh, it is just it, it is just so spot on. Oh yeah, like Billy Jean. Quarantine. That, that yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I'll yeah. send you. I'll email you the link to that. I, 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 quarantine is not quite right over. over. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, so, uh, get the put my robe on. Get the mail. Turn <laughs> around. Okay. You know. It's yeah. It's 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 pretty good. Well, anyway. Okay. First of all, I want to ask Kelly, how have things been for you during quarantine, the family at home and, and all that kind of good stuff? How are things going for you? Th things are good. I will say, um, you know, I, I typically day to day work for a video production agency and business. We we, we I'll just give you that perspective first. Um, we kind of found out things were going to be serious during South by Southwest when South by Southwest got canceled. That's one of the biggest weeks of the year for us. We film, you know, we film uh uh, film premieres. We do interactive stuff. We do book signings. We do we you know film co all this kind of stuff, and it all got canceled. And that was like oh no. Um, and then kind of after that, things started slowing down. We we started working from home more. There aren't a lot of shoots going on, but what did pick up was live streaming. We have a studio with a um, very fast internet connection with fiber, and and that's actually where we're going to do spin up this year is in that studio. It was like we're doing all these live streams, but. Um, the family's been good. We have not been so locked down that we can't go outside. I mean, and we have a we have a nice yard. We have a park nearby. So I've been my kids' school. So we've been going out, you know, flying a little bit. And uh, it's it's been it's been trying, but not as bad as it could be for me. I, I I feel very lucky to be where I am. Well, you know, that's that's good to hear. And well, for me, um, yesterday I got a text from my younger son. He works and food service at an assisted living facility and found out that one of his coworkers who hasn't been at work for a week was tested positive for COVID-19. Oh, wow. So, 
Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and, and he, my, tw I have two sons and one's 25, the other one's 35. And, you know, and I told him and I looked it up and I found out I got, I got them registered for free tests in the area. You know, I said, you know, right. You know, I said, you know, all you got to do is show your driver's license and you're good to go. So they're going to go do that tomorrow. But, um, but it's been seven days, it's been seven or eight days. And I told him, I said, you know, the clock is ticking. You know, when you get to 14, you're pretty much can think that you're pretty good with that kind of stuff. So, um, well, can't you be, can you be asymptomatic, asymptomatic still? Yeah, you can be point? asymptomatic too. And, um, they've been, they've been pretty good because I, I've been, you know, I've been telling them, of course, my wife and I have been taking supplements. We've been taking like vitamins. Uh, we've also been taking zinc as well too. So I got, the, I sent them some zinc and they, of all things, they didn't have a thermometer. I said, so I, I bought him a thermometer, sent it to him on him. I mean, that was one of the things you couldn't find on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Until they, he, were, they were very hard to find. Yeah. But but yeah. I scored one for them and got that sent on to them. So they're going to take get a test. They've been feeling fine. And I told them, I said, you know, as much as possible. They live in a, in a it's not real big two-bedroom apartment. And it's just like, okay, you guys, you know, try to try to do your best to stay apart. But it's like next to impossible in a two-bedroom yeah, yeah. apartment. So. Well, don't you live, Bill, like right on the water? Yeah, we live on right. Um, we have a lake right out behind us. It's a man-made lake, but it, it's but it, it's right out on the water. So you can um, go out and get fresh air pretty much. Anytime. Oh yeah, we've That's been going out in the backyard like good. forever, and we've been wearing. Well, we were. My wife's still wearing a mask, but I when I went out going out to fly, I haven't been wearing a mask. But I've gone to you know our big trips have been like to the pharmacy to pick up stuff through the drive through right. uh, because we've had all our groceries delivered by Instacart. Um, nice. so we didn't even have to have to do that. So, um, first question I wanted to ask you tonight, Kelly, and then I'll let Marcus and Ron, uh, sure, get, sure. get dibs in here. Um, you know, you mentioned spin up and, you know, and this is exciting because it's going to be something that's going to be such a totally different experience this year. Why don't you tell everybody what's, what's in the works and when it is and all the 411 on this. Yeah. So, so the intent this year, I, I was really struggling with this, right? Because I, I obviously wanted to have it again. It's growing. It, it was so much fun two years in a row. I mean, it's been such a wonderful, and you guys, you guys know this, um, just well received by the community. I felt like, you know, it's getting some traction with speakers. And so all of a sudden, can we have it? And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden it's like, everybody's doing virtual events. It makes sense to do a virtual event this year and kind of um, allow a lot of this stuff to settle till people are more comfortable traveling. Nobody's putting their health at risk. And also quite frankly, who knows if we would even be able to have that kind of event at that time. So it's gonna be virtual. It's gonna be on September 12th, which is a Saturday. And it's going to be, as I said, um, at my office, um, we've had the ability through some work we're doing recently to build several sets, like really nice looking areas within the office space where we live stream from. Um, I've got I've got more and more equipment because live streaming is becoming more part of my my company's business. So we we have access to that. So I think we can produce a really high quality show for I'm I'm thinking like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. until uh, three in the afternoon, five or six hours. So my encouragement would be to have people come and go, you know, drop in, drop out. Um, I'm hoping to get a lot of people to um, contribute content remotely. So that might either be live like this or via a pre-recorded message. And I also think that's gonna allow me to get some folks that wouldn't wouldn't normally travel to come down to this event. They're, they'd be like, hey, I can record a video or I can hop on a hop on a live stream for an hour or it wouldn't even be an hour. I think I'll have more presenters for a shorter period of time. But then the, the, the coolest thing, you guys probably know that DJI has agreed to sponsor the event. Um, they are offering currently uh, in terms of prizes, I think I'm gonna get one of everything. And, and this is the first time I've told this, but um, uh, every consumer drone they make in their lineup currently, it, which, wow. which is pretty cool. I mean, they've given me in the past uh, Mavic 2 and the Ro uh, Robo Master, and, and, but, but I, I th they've been very generous with, with what they've given as far as their high-end drones and such. But then the other cool thing is I just got confirmation that uh, DRL is actually going to be an official sponsor, the Drone Racing League. So oh, wow. they're, they're going to they're gonna commit to... Uh, some kind of giveaways to cross promoting the event among the FPV community and also having some of their pilots participate, at, you know, remotely, most likely. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. See, this yeah, is I'm really excited because I, I feel like this is a good chance to bring more FPV pilots into this into this group. 
you're going to get such a great mix. And, and you know, and, and I think I think the thing is, too, I think, you know, should, you know, like maybe um, maybe the year after, you know, it'd be OK to physically meet. OK, I think you're going to have have, you know, I think you're going to have a, a good th thing, a problem, capacity issues. OK, because I think it's going to go probably go through the roof. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I do hope, I do hope so. I mean, we, we went from about 65, 70 quote unquote uh, paid tickets the first year to almost a hundred last year. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's those first two years are very telling, but ultimately for me, um, it was so nice to meet in person. It really felt very intimate. So I'd love to hear ideas either in your, you know, from your community, Bill, and in the chat or from this group here that, you know, we're all on right now. If you have ideas on ways to make it more personal, please suggest them because ultimately to me, that's what it's all about is being able to connect with people. Um, oh, so so then part two, so that's kind of the main thing. Uh, the DRL thing, I haven't announced that to anybody. That's This is the first time I've told anybody. I, I, I talked to their PR person uh, two days ago and she said, yeah, we're in, So um, so which is really awesome. But the other thing that I have announced, although we're still trying to lock down the date, is a late September or early October meetup in Colorado. So you guys are familiar with Sean Oz. Uh, Sean has, has um, you know, uh, Ed Ricker and I went up to visit him and, and just do some drone flying earlier this year, right before all this stuff hit. I'm so glad we went. We got to snowboard. Uh, we got to see snow. Got to walk on a frozen lake. I, I know you guys think that's probably funny that I think it's really cool. i would never walked on a frozen lake before. Mm -hmm. Totally new experience. But Sean has this beautiful location in his little town of Dillon, which is, I'd say, about mm, an hour and 15 minutes outside of Denver. And there's a there's a spot right on the lake. It's a pavilion. It's like a community thing. We can rent it uh, for the day. There's no issues with flying there. We can fly out over this lake with mountains all around. And I thought, what a great place to, to do an in-person meetup. And so we're going to do that afterward. Um, about three weeks to a month after. So it'll be two components, the, the actual online thing and then this meetup. And the meetup won't, won't really have speakers. We're gonna do like a barbecue, maybe do like a talent show, you know, those kind of things. So that, that's, I'm excited about, I'm, I'm actually almost more excited about that than I am about, about the event, but I'm excited about both. That's awesome. Mar Marcus, Ron. Uh, I, I just want to say, Kelly, we, we had uh, Sean Oz on uh, Zeno Nation about a month ago, you know, because he wasn't really doing much because he can't work. He couldn't yeah. work a yeah. while. So he came on and he told us about, you know, the idea of doing uh, spin up in his community. And he had he had all these great ideas. I guess you guys have talked about and it just sounded terrific. And then it all kind of got derailed by this, uh, you know, terrible uh, uh, coronavirus. But I'm, I'm glad that. Uh, you know, you're still going to pull some of that together for that meetup. That uh, that sounds exciting. Sean had so much energy for this event; it was incredible, Kelly. Well, he, he's he's super excited about it, and I'll tell you too. Uh, just just to interject real quick, I do hope that I can get I can get everything locked down. I'm trying to, in the next two weeks um, before I do my next live stream, which is monthly. I'm trying to get everything locked down so I can have a registration page with all the data so that we can commit to people buying, you know, if they're going to come to that uh, to that event afterward, buying a ticket. Here's the thing right now. Tickets are so cheap, right? They're they're The price can only go up. You could probably get a round trip to Denver from just about anywhere for less than 200 bucks, I would think. At this oh, point. yeah. Or, 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 or maybe less than 100. You know, it just depends on the deals that are going on. So I'd almost say, you know, if I can get it out there is. It, it's one of these things too, where the airlines are um, being very, um, very, I don't want to say generous, but they're being very good with their return policies, like if cancellations happen. So, so I feel like I could probably get a lot of people to commit to coming to Denver if it's not that expensive to, to buy the tickets now. And, you know, if for some reason we're still in a, a quandary at that point, hopefully you could just refund the ticket and use the credit later. So, so I, I feel like the time is now to get people interested. I'm actually buying tickets for several trips at the end of the year now, so that just so that I have them. Not that prices it. Yeah. That's smart. For a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, you know, even if it goes south, it's better than a six hundred dollar ticket is what I would have normally paid for. Something oh yeah. Like so, yeah. Marcus, do you have any questions? Yeah, you Marcus? Spin up. Well, uh, m mostly except to say that, uh, Kelly, I really loved that video you did with all the cameos from people from Spin Up over oh, the Oh, thank you. The song, the, the greatest song about drones ever. 
Yeah, that was just so cool. I mean, Thank that you. was undeniably cool. I wrote that song, and and uh, and it's funny because I actually sang the original version, and I sounded so terrible that I had to have my buddy sing it. Like I, 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 he played the lead guitar and I played the rhythm and, and, uh, and then I, I sang the track and then he was kind of mixing it for me. He's a real musician. And, and, uh, he was trying to be nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to add some reverb, some more reverb, we'll add some more reverb. And I finally realized at some point, why don't you just sing it for me? And he, he did the vocals and it was much better. <laughs> That's cool. awesome. He didn't have an auto tune. <laughs> It didn't help. It didn't help. <laughs> but your drum skills are impeccable, Kelly. No, I, I will say that. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll just leave leave it Thank there. You. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, what, one quick thing: we're going to have a virtual spin up this year. Can we have a virtual Friday night uh, dinner at Sands Boat where I can get that delicious seafood and you can get that nice band to play again? That was, you know, I mean, I love it, but I just love to start that that Friday night event was just like. You know, out sitting outside in that warm weather, getting that delicious food. It was, it was a beautiful night. Yeah, no, that I appreciate that. And and they were that they were just like so friendly and and nice. Uh, the, the the management there. Anyway, uh, I'll do my best. You know, I, I do think I do think though, if if we end up having the spin down event, um, we would we would do some serious barbecuing in in Colorado. <laughs> Good that, would be, that would be fantastic. Well, you know, um, kind of want, wanting to, you know, we'll we'll look forward to getting the information, and as soon as we get it, I know, I know, Ron and Marcus will 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 blast it out on Zeno yeah, and, and, and on their own channels as well. And you got it here because I think it's I think it's a great your your con your concept this year is fantastic. I mean, you know, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade kind yeah. of. Thing, so. And I, I, you know, I'll be honest. I didn't think it was fair to to um, to everyone, you know, because I think some people are at more risk than others, right? And so, so ultimately, you know, if, if you look at if you look at the average crowd of the four of us, the average age of the four of us, you know, we're all way over fifty, right? And so mm -hmm. at this point, um, you know, statistically, I, I think. A lot of this audience is more reluctant to travel right now than than I would I would be comfortable having travel. I don't want I don't want people to put themselves in the feeling that they might get something. So I thought the virtual event kind of had that going on. And the other nice thing is by doing the live event after we're putting a little more time between us now and then. You know, at some point yeah. things have got to get back to normal. But I feel like the longer we wait, the more normal it'll be. You know, and and I think you're right along those lines. I know here in Florida. Looking at the stat, this, the numbers are, are are really bearing that out. I mean, you know, as, as time is moving on and as they're doing things in a in a wise manner, I think we'll, I think we're we're gonna we're gonna kick this thing. I, I really do. All right, you know, one of the big things, obviously here, you know, the Mavic Air too. I mean, it, it's just it's just on everybody everybody's radar right now, so to speak. I mean, that's a bad bad term, but you know, it, it really has has kind of set the tone right now for DJI. And you know, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like you ha have the mini. Now you have the Mavic Air two, and then you have the Mavic two, and then probably something else coming this summer. You know, it's like it's 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 like Mama Bear, Baby Bear, Papa Bear kind of thing. You know, um, one of the things that struck me right away, Kelly, ab about this is you know, from from just having the having the mini and then having this is you know, it feels solid. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's so it, it it is a big jump up from the mini. It's it feels heavier. It feels more solid. I do want to interject one quick thing though. You mentioned about something you know maybe coming out over the summer. I did get a commitment from DJI that if something new comes out between now and spin up, that would be included in the giveaway. So wow. So that that's that's kind of cool because because uh, you know it would be it, it would just create a little more buzz. So they they said yeah whatever whatever is currently. Um, announced at that point will be in the giveaway, so I'm I'm excited about that. But um, I I didn't want to love the Mavic Air, but I do. It's it's just so it's so quiet, it's so smooth, it's so fast, and and I was flying it in sport mode um, and and in regular mode, kind of whipping around this field the other day and just letting go of the stick and watching. You know, they all do that really well, but it seems to be like Goldilocks. You know, it's like just right in terms of size and and you know the. The, the mini just feels a little tiny and light and as it should be and and the 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 Mavic Air 2 or sorry the Mavic 2 Pro or or Zoom those those feel more substantial but they feel a little bit more like a truck you know the the Mavic Air 2 feels like a sports car mm -hmm. I mean, that's a that's a fantastic analogy because you know it, it, it's like that was the first thing I said when I picked it up 
you know, is is it it it, it has some it's 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 substantial. One of the things though that I found during my flights and and, and um, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about this last night on Xeno Nation is when I was doing my precision landing test and flying out, it was like I said, it was a pretty windy day. Um, I had the gimbal pitch. It, it, it was doing it was doing that several times and I had to had to adjust it because of the wind. I mean, I was I was really kind of surprised. I mean, that really kind of kind of took me back because, you know, it's like, you know, I've had it was like 15 mile an hour winds. I wasn't really expecting it. And in it in. in you know, I was at 100 and then 200 feet, but then it didn't matter where I was at it. But it was just, it was just kind of doing that. It was. Just I, I had the same. I had the same issue on my return to home a couple of times when I was sending it out. Um, I just, I just saw it kind of like, like for a second, just kind of drop down. And I don't know. I don't know if that's a. I don't know if that's a calibration issue. I don't know if that's a software. You know, if that could be updated with software. If it's, if it's a physical thing. It only happened to. And it was very quick. Like it just, it just kind of happened and disappeared. I was looking down at my screen and I was like, oh, did that just happen? And then it happened again. So I've experienced the same thing. Yeah, I've had the same thing happen too. Um, and, and it happens when you know, you're flying into the wind. Mm -hmm. and, and when I have the, uh, the gimbal pitched up that I'm getting, you know, like one third of the ground, two thirds of the sky, it pushes it back down. So I'm getting, you know, mostly ground or whatever. And I've had the same thing happen in my Mavic 2 Pro flying in get into high winds where where did it go sideways or or it, or it went it down just went down just just yeah, dipped, yeah, just okay. right there just did like it dipped like you know it, it went from being raised just a little bit to being down just a little bit it's like the wind caught it on top like an yeah, airfoil yeah and, and i fly a lot at the beach so i get a lot of strange gusty winds that most people don't see Marcus, so, how about you? You you haven't run into that, have you? Yeah, so I haven't had that specifically happen, but uh, you know what I do know is the probably the first video I watched on the Mavic Air Two was Billy Kyle's, and he mentioned that very on his very first flight. So, yeah. Well, you know, um, you know, the, one of the other things for me is, and, and I noticed this, you know, after you know, I don't normally go through a ton of batteries at a time. But my first time out, I went through all three batteries, okay? Which and, which, and it's a long flight time, so you must have flown exactly, quite a bit. I was just going <laughs> to say that. That flight time, I mean, it's it just like they really kind of tweaked everything they could in terms of getting flight time out of this. It was just I, – I was just so impressed with it, Kelly. Well, so have, have, you guys, have you guys heard about this thing where if you use the multi-charger for the first time, it might break your battery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We so, have, anybody yeah. experienced that? No, our friend Lauren Donauer, um, he's he works up at a DJI store up up in up in Canada, um, and he's been on the show occasionally with us. He's in the chat tonight as well. He's the one that told us about that, and he said he's well. He called it a gang charger. He said he said don't use your your gang charger at first, or you could brick all your batteries. Those Canadians so charge gang charger. Time. Yeah, gang, gang charger. I was like, I was yeah. like, okay, Lauren, we give up. Put, put, you're putting petrol in the battery. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah it's my, like, my wife's actually Canadian, so uh, so I, I can say that, I guess. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is, that, is that considered racist? What is that if you <laughs> Canadians? Anyway, uh, so here's the thing. I actually didn't know about that. And I did charge my, um, so I had the fly more combo. I did charge my batteries the first time with the gang charger. I like that term actually. Uh, I did charge it with the gang charger, no issues. So I've, I've run, I've run every, all, all three of those batteries down and back up. And I assume, you know, it's either going to happen right away or I don't know. Is it something that could happen delayed? Or do you yeah, think it I think happened said the, first, the first time you do it, it, uh, first time you charge your batteries to do it that way, and then since then I I did it on on the uh, on the multi charger and, it, and my mine's been fine. Well, Lord, Lord did preference that he said by the time you get yours, the you know a firmware update may have fixed it. So say you got your Mavic Air two and, and you did the firmware update like right away, like a lot yeah. of them did it. that yeah. may have fixed the problem before you even got to the point where you're charging batteries well and, and you know when you get that inconsistent firmware error and you have to you have to slide and then you wait for your battery to update that's happened mm -hmm. every time uh like on all of my every time i've used a new battery every time so it's three batteries each time i put a different battery in the first time i got that firmware uh inconsistent firmware thing and had to wait mm -hmm. now one of my subscribers and i wanted to ask you this kelly um 
he's he's of the opinion he's but you know and kind of you know with the mini um when he was doing firmware updates with the mini um to do them via dji as, uh, assistant versus doing doing the over the air the wi-fi and he actually put a video together richard laws his name l-i-h and um he put a whole video together about that saying a lot of time, sorry, sorry hold on I'm, I'm just i'm just bringing up the chat here he so put a whole video together uh, about trying to that. trying to mute that okay go ahead okay and what he basically said was you can run for some reason doing it over the air via, via the wi-fi you don't sometimes might miss stuff even though it says it's complete because he did some he did some investigating and he he did it that way and was having some issues with the mini and then he backed that out and then he did it verse with DJI assistant and then he didn't have those issues after he did that so his his opinion is to do it with DJI assistant versus versus Wi-Fi and you know and, and I have to say you know it all depends one of the things uh, through the years it, you know it, it's like it all depends on when you're doing it because a lot of times I found if DJI servers are busy Okay, it's just gonna it's just gonna gonna croak no matter what. Uh, but if you pick the right time, it's it's gonna go through. So, so you're saying it's more about uh, the timing than it is about the the platform? Yeah, that's what that's what I think as far as like using DJI Assistant too. I, I think it, I think it's better. I, I kind of agree with him after watching his video. But I I didn't know if you've heard anything about well, that or not. DJI Assistant is actually extremely useful um, for calibrating. A variety of things you can actually have you ever gone through the whole process where you oh, calibrate uh calibrate the camera um mm -hmm. i did that with the floor screen. yeah yeah and, and so and and then i just actually so one of the things i was going to try was using the um original goggles with the um mavic air 2 so i just updated the firmware on my goggles which i hadn't used in probably six months but but um but that i did that through dji assistant so it's powerful I probably pull it out every two months or so. I mean, I, I've done all my other updates via the app, but I always do them at home on, on my Wi-Fi. We have pretty good internet here, so I do it here before I go out in the field so that I don't run into that issue of it just spinning. Yeah. And I hey, think Billy, so you touched on something there. You are able to use your goggles with uh, the Mavic Air 2. Is that correct? Watch the video. Uh, no, I, I actually, I actually uh, haven't tried it yet. So... So here, here's here's uh, here's what I um, was told because I, I asked somebody at DJI. Um, there's a firmware uh, update coming out that's going to allow you to use the smart controller with the Mavic Air, Mavic Air 2, um, but supposedly they're not supporting the goggles. But but I, they've been I don't know I, I've gotten bad information before, so I'm going to try it. I'm just going to see if. So if you guys use the goggles, like like when you go in and you hit link and it shows you the list of drones that you can link to, I don't know, I don't know if you've seen that. But anyway, um, I'm going to try it. You will be able to use the goggles um, with a cable. So the, the new firmware update on the goggles and on the um, smart controller will allow you to pull. Um, so if, you, if you're flying the Mavic Air 2 with the smart controller, you can just uh, hook a cable to the goggles and then you'd be able to do it that way. But but through OcuSync, here's the thing: I don't understand why it wouldn't work because OcuSync 2, uh, I would I would think that's the compatibility side because you can do the Phantom the Phantom 4 Pro uh, V2 which has OcuSync 2. You can do both the Mavic 2s which have OcuSync 2, and you can do the Mavic Pro which has the original OcuSync. All work wire wirelessly with the goggles. I don't know why the Air wouldn't, but there's a bit of a rant. Well, uh, you know. Well, you know, it was real interesting that right before it, it, it was, I, I don't know how many weeks ago, um, you know, I was last year, I got selected as being a beta tester for the smart controller with a Phantom 4 Pro V2.0. And I just, I can tell you what, Kelly, it, it was just like, it, it's it's almost like Nirvana flying the Phantom 4 with that smart controller. I mean, it, it was just. Oh, I, I, I love the smart controller. It's one really of the it's it's a luxury. I mean, is it necessary? No, but once you use it, it's yeah. It's, so it's nice. like you don't want to you don't want to go back. Well, you know they. You, what was funny, David from Kluge Tech Time, he had it too. He had the he had the beta, and then you know we kept emailing DJI and never heard anything. And then finally, I, I emailed him and I said, you know, are, are is there any plans moving forward to make this permanent? And they said we have no plans at this time. 
And then what? Less than less than six weeks later, boom. Okay, it's out on a smart control. Yeah, phone. yeah. You know, well, it was just, well, let me let me ask uh, the 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 Phantom Four Pro V two that you were flying was it the Plus? Did it have the built in the built in no. screen? Okay, no, so no. so. So, so I have the one with the screen, and that's that's also a comparison that I kind of want to look at is, is the smart controller better than that? I mean, it's a different form factor for sure, but it's it's really just a matter of, um, uh, you know, is it, I don't know, the, the, that that screen that's on there, I think is a five inch crystal sky screen. So it's very nice on the, on the uh, Phantom 4 V2 Plus. That would be good because, you know, especially down here in Florida and where you're at with, with the sun, I mean, it's just like, you gotta have something like that. It's just, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's just too bright. It, it, it really is. And um, so many, so many damn things rely on your phone now. I was trying to actually use, um, I was trying to use an Insta 360 to do some 360 video with the drone, and and uh, that actually, um, that actually, you have to have your phone to control the Insta 360. So then, then you know, then what do you do with the Mavic? You know, I, I, <laughs> too many devices. Yeah, really. I mean, it, it's just. It's just kind of it's just kind kind of crazy. I mean, you know, we're, we've been of the consent. I mean, we had fun the night the night of the launch. Okay, we had like a a pre show on my channel, and then we flipped over to Zeno Nation, and just you know, we just we just it was just it was a lot of fun, especially because you know we're all quote unquote you know shut in and whatever. We just made it a night of fun. It, you know? it was a, it was a nice thing to get excited about. You know, I I, I do think I agree with you. I think it's really nice when. You have something to look forward to, speculate about. I mean, you you guys always have the scoop on these things. I don't know who this mysterious person you know that's always giving you information, Bill. But you know, I'd like to meet this guy. Oh, he's a good guy. He really is. He's up in Canada. Yeah. Hey, real, real quick too. I just want to. I just want to say. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to go all Ken Heron on you with uh, with with the super chats. But you got three super chats. Uh, Stephen yeah, Ewing, five I did. pounds. Yeah, uh, Stephen Ewing, Jeff Voigt, and Jaybird Drone tonight, and Metro Drones. Thank you guys for, yeah, for the super nice. chats. Fantastic. We we really appreciate that a lot. I mean, we're uh, getting more than usual, Kelly. I think uh, you you help bring some uh, good super chats to the show. It must be the pretty face. No, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, imagine if I have Ken on and his pretty face. Uh, yeah, and his. Uh, you know what it is. I think it's Pavlovian with people on his show because they want to hear that cash register sound <laughs> <laughs> every, every time he does it, <laughs> or the sticker song. Either one. Right. Or, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you saw um, Ken Dono. He did a video, and it was like one of his first flights up the Mavic Air two. He was he was down. Oh, he for, crashed it. Yeah, he crashed it. I okay. That, yeah. And and, and I, I would have paid. I would have paid a million dollars to have been on that rooftop to have heard what he had to say. I mean, he was with Michael Barrington there. Oh my gosh, it, that just would have. But he was smart. I mean, I, I got to give him, got to give him a lot of credit because uh, yeah, that, that took some guts to put out. I mean, he basically put it all out there. He put it all out there, and then he also was smart in how he did it. He says, you know, I could have gone higher in the air, but then I just decided, you know, just hit it up against the building and, and let it let it fall down and he used the you know the find me part on the app and he found it which which he was he was it, real it was still flyable he said right yeah he still- showed it and i'm like you gotta be kidding me that thing's almost like a tank you know it's like you know they said a lot of people said with a spark they ran it into trees and buildings oh. and stuff and I, I crashed my. I actually crashed my pre-release spark, uh, which was a bummer. It, f- fortunately, I was almost done with my video. But you know, what do you do then? You call them and say, "Hey, uh, you know that drone you sent me? Could you send me another one?" <laughs> hey, you got another super chat from Joshua yes, Lighting. Yeah, uh, Joshua. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, all right. You know, hey, in, we, Ke- in Kelly's defense, you pre-release spark that was out without the controller, right? So you had to do you were flying with your phone, right? No, I had the controller. Oh, thought- oh, 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 Spark. No, I'm sorry. Mavic yeah. Mini. Mavic Mini. It was yeah. the Mavic. Oh. No, I didn't crash my Spark. I, cra- I crashed my Mavic Mini into a wall in my office. Um, <laughs> like, like, I was flying it indoors, and I just, like, why well, I was being dumb. But, sorry, it was the Mavic Mini, not the Spark. Okay. Hey, hey Kel, I mean, you may not be able to say that anything here, but uh, but uh, j- just nobody's listening but us guys. Did you have that Mavic Mini at spin up? I did, yeah. Okay. Ah, that, was, that, was, that was hard. That was hard. 
that was difficult. I was going to say you, you, it had to have been like pulling teeth when, when, when you have something. Like that. <laughs> you know, you're on stage, and I, I sometimes just get um, you know a little little a little aggressive with what I say, you know, and that's why I was not having anything to drink. I didn't want to get you know. Ah! <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so next time, next time we're all together, you guys need to buy me shots, and and you'll hear you'll hear, we'll we'll hear everything. Drums, yeah, guys. Guys, right before a new drone comes out, we know what to do. We'll know everything, guys. I mean, it's just as, it's, as much as I. You know what, though? I didn't get a. I didn't get an air. Uh, I didn't get an air too. I don't. I don't know why. I. I. I, I like talk to those guys pretty frequently while I, while I was playing and spin up stuff and and uh, but but um, yeah, you know but th I have to say DJI has been great to me. As I said, they're sponsoring spin up and and you know even though. Certainly, there are uh, they're they're the eight hundred pound gorilla with the target on their back that everybody's after. But you know, I think as it, for our community, for the folks that make these kind of videos, I do think that I, I actually was really happy to see some folks like um, Felix with Quadcopter Guide in Germany. I don't know if you guys know him, but um, he, well, he got a, he got an air, and and I was really glad to see him. You know. It, I, I want to see more people get it. It seems like it's always the same people, myself included. And so it's nice that they're kind of like, you know, Bill, you said you got the pre-release of the smart controller. And it's, it's nice that they're kind of doing that. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I, I, I was bummed, but at the same time, I wasn't that bummed. Well, you know, and that's something Ron and Marcus and I kind of talked about because, you know, we're, we're, we, we kind of think, you know, like you and Rick Smith, um, you know, for starters, getting it. Rick didn't get it this time either. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Well, you know, Aldrin, Aldrin Astachio got it. We, you know, we kind of fi figured that. But then, you know, it's like the I Justine and and some of the other ones. You know, I don't even know if Casey. I haven't watched. No, Casey. no. Who was missing? That's what I was just gonna say. Who was missing? Casey Neistat has not had a a Mavic Air two video, so he must not have got one. Or yeah, I don't think he's making. I don't think he's making as many videos. I think he's kind of uh, slowed down on his video making. Yeah, well, you know, he moved from New York to LA, so yeah. I don't know, don't know if that that's that was in the mix or not. Um, kind of want to change gears up here, and uh, and I know this subject is near and dear to Marcus and, and Ron's heart and Kelly's too, the Skydio two. But yes. before we say that, I just want to want to let Kelly know I, I got I got the reservation, and the day I got the reservation, I decided to go ahead and cancel my order for Skydio two. Okay, and everybody's going, "Are you nuts?" What are you doing? Okay, or, or is your head screwed on straight? And, and I and I said for 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 reasons for me, yeah, because one of the persons I talked to was Ken Dono, and he was one of the first persons to get it and to try it. And he yeah. would tell me, you know, we we went out to dinner with he and his wife for for Christmas, and he said, Billy, he said you made a smart decision, you know, not not getting that. He said that he said that was actually a very wise thing because you know, uh, he he said. He said, "Being a, you know, it, it's not it's not a nor it's it's not quote unquote a normal drone, okay? Um, uh, you know, he said a lot of people, you know, you know, have expectations for a drone, and you know, with the Skydio too, you know, it's not like you know, it, it's not it's." It, he said, "You know, he, he just started going off on a litany of reasons about that. So, you know, I'm I'm going to get out of the way here. I'm going to let Ron and Marcus go for it with." With Kelly, well, first I'll ask you, Kelly, how have you liked Skydio Two? Uh, I I am amazed by it. Um, it's it's a different animal. It is. It's not what you're used to. But um, I've had it on with my bicycle all around my neighborhood, um, and I've had it on an electric skateboard and on a scooter. I, and and as far as chasing you. Here's the thing. Here's what it does really, really well is with the beacon. And, and I have to actually thank Rick Halber, who lent me his beacon. I still have it. Um, so Rick, Rick ordered the beacon with his. I wasn't able to order the beacon because they didn't, they didn't have them by the time. I was, I was kind of low on the list. But anyway, I have Rick Halber's uh, beacon. And with the beacon, it will follow you relentlessly. And it will do so. Here, here's, here's what blows me away. You're, you're riding your bike. and It's behind you. You push the button on the beacon to go in front of you, and it doesn't go in front of you slowly. It goes and is in front of you. And it doesn't matter if there's trees. It doesn't matter what there is. It goes around. I've, I've, it's not failed on me at all. Now I saw Billy Kyle put it in the water, you know. So I know, I know that's, uh, I know that's a possibility. But so far for me, as far as following me goes, uh, flawless. 
two things. N number one, I don't think there's another drone that I own that puts a bigger grin on my face than that Skydio 2. Uh, and number two, the most underrated thing on that drone is the camera. I don't spend a bunch of time color grading or anything. And the video straight off of that camera is uh, phenomenal. And then, of course, everything that everybody else loves about it as well. And I know Ron can speak more to the camera than, than I can. Yeah, I totally agree with Marcus. Uh, you know, I, you know, I love the camera for people that don't want to color grade. People that just want good video, wrote right the memory card. Uh, that, that's one. Of the, that's a drone to get for that reason. And and just like Marcus said, when when I first got it, it was taken out and playing around. With it. I had more fun with that drone playing around with the winner than anything else. Like you know, um, yeah, it's not a Mavic Two replacement, and I don't think it's meant to be. And that's what a lot of people like Bill, you know it's a good reason they, you know, it's good to build cancel because if you expect to get a Mavic 2 Pro uh, replacement, it's not. It, it, it's a, like you said, it's a different beast. But again, I have more fun taking that out than I do any other drone. But I'm going to throw this caveat in. Since I did the, the recent updates for the app and the uh, and the uh, firmware update about two weeks ago, because I'm on iOS, so they always come out about a week after the Android updates. All of a sudden now, it doesn't follow the beacon as well as it used to. And for really? I've ever, I've seen the gimbal shake now. Wow. Um, well, now, so they just released a, a firmware update two weeks ago. So I guess the developers, because I know they're, I know their manufacturing and shipping is shut down, right? So maybe the developers are still working remotely. Uh, that's a possibility. So they, yeah, they, they, yeah, they uh, about about two, maybe almost three weeks ago for Android, they released a firmware and they did an app update. And I've seen again, it's before more. I flew it twice since then, and it's the worst it's performed since I've ever I've had it with this recent firmware update. It could just be my drone. Maybe I did something wrong with the firmware update, but something's something's up with it. Oh, and so actually, Sean Oz said the same thing on his most recent video with this guy. He said he's going to contact them because um, he had um, similar issues to me in a video where he did. He you know, just recently he, he saw enough snow that he had to file his snowboard down the side of the mountain. He had said similar issues to what I'm reporting. There, there's a couple of comments I wanted to just read uh, about it. Um, and that was uh, where to go. It was Lauren was saying, um, biggest thing I don't like about the Skydio is the video always looks like it's hunting, not smooth. Um, I, I, I think my problem, I haven't tried to use the Skydio in any sort of um, cinematic way. All I've done with it so far is whip it around the sky really fast, put, pointing the beacon, you know, sort of the lightsaber uh, force thing. Or so, so I, I can't really attest to how it does under more controlled. Um, cinematic situations, but I do think that I do th think that Sean, you know, we've referenced Sean several times. He made a really good point that the Skydio to me, the camera or the, the video you get looks a lot like a GoPro Hero 7. So I have wow. a GoPro Hero 7, like, like if I put my Hero 7 next to the Skydio's footage, they, they look almost identical to me. And, and the Hero 7 is a great. Uh, great camera, you know, it, it does yeah. a good job. It's just, it's a look, right? It's a very distinctive look. It's yeah. kind of got a little bit of a blue tint to it, in my opinion. Just, just if it's running in audio, in auto. But, um, but I, I've not, I've not seen the hunting thing that Lauren was referring to. But I, I know what you, I know what you're talking about. Um, Billy Kyle uh, told us a while back. He said that uh, he heard rumor that um, some of the engineers that worked on the video for uh, Schedule Two were former GoPro employees. So maybe they brought a little of their know-how over from GoPro, their little, the, the, their, their, you know, their color, uh, 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 you know, look to it. And um, also, I had, I had two points to make there. An old man. I forgot the second point of something you just said. So uh, it, it always happens to me. I, I never want to have two points because I never remember the, uh, the second point. <laughs> Kelly, I wanted to ask you: did, did you get the controller with it? Yeah, yeah, I did get the controller, um, and I've only used it a little bit. I've mostly used the beacon. Um, it, it's it's funny because I I actually enjoy flying it with the beacon more. Now I I did actually with Sean up in Colorado. I did use the controller flying around in the pine trees. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to. I say this is nice. I don't know if this is good or bad, but you don't have to pay a lot of attention to where you're going because it goes around stuff so well, right? You can you can kind of throw the stick backwards and it'll kind of hunt its way through the trees. Um, I, I, I hear the big issue with the controller is range. 
you know, yeah. and, and yeah. that, but Rick Halber also uh, sent me, he had ordered two. So along with the beacon, I have a range extender that he sent me, which I haven't actually tried yet. Anybody tried it? No, I don't. I'm, I'm not a big range guy. It, uh, I've, I've got it out like, uh, you know, I've, I've got it out like 2,500 feet or something like that or whatever with still have PV. So it's good enough for me. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a range tester. I like basically filming things that are, you know, within eyesight, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, keep, keep it legal. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that, you know, and I talked to Ken a little bit about this because he was, you know, um, with the Scotty, you know, that, you know, it, it was, I hate to say the controller was an afterthought, but it was just like, okay, Parrot, sell us some controllers and yeah, yeah. slap our internals in it and, and do what we need to do and, yeah. and, and make it good, you know. And I know both Ron and Marcus can speak to it because, you know, it's an Anafi controller is really what it is. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, and, and I think, you know, and for what Ken did a test with Michael Barrington early on when he had it, and I really liked this video. What he did, Michael did, was he kind of chased it with with a Mavic 2, and he had the camera pointing at it because early on there was no telemetry data, okay? The app didn't, when, when it first came out, the, the telemetry data was missing until, like, I think the first firmware update. Yes. So they had no idea how far out they were, okay? Oh, wow. So, yeah, so he went with Michael to do that, which was actually great thinking because they, he had no idea, and then... All of a sudden, he completely lost. I mean, and it wasn't that far away. It was maybe, I don't know, 1,500, not even quite 2,000 feet. Lost his FPV view, and then next thing you know, it was coming back. I mean, it was just it, – it, it just it just quit. So, you know, he said the one thing, you know, is that controller. It's problematic. So, you know, I would really like to see if if um, Skydio – I mean, you know, I, I know with the coronavirus and, and all that and being shut down – but if maybe they could give some thought to like if they put out a 2.5 or something or if they do do an upgrade that they that they have some kind of an upgraded controller with better range because you know say what you will that was probably even more than the noise from the original Mavic Air that was probably the number one complaint you know it was that it was the range with the Mavic Air yeah and, yeah and, and i think you know for a lot of people you know that's like the number one question is is range right away well, I, I agree with Ron too. I, I I've done some range tests, and I, I don't know why people love them. Like they get lots of views, and and I, I'm actually so I'm I'm gonna go up this summer to the St. Lawrence River, and I'm thinking about sending my Mavic Air down the river. You know, see how far it'll go. I don't know if I should do that or not, but but I know it'll got get a lot of views. But regardless, um, uh, I I agree. You don't need to fly your thing two miles or three miles or four miles away. That's there's there's really I mean it's illegal. And it's it's really not. I don't see the purpose of that. But you also don't want to lose the signal, um, like like you just talked about um, that happened. You don't want to just have it suddenly drop and you can't see your screen anymore and you don't know where it is. So that's where OcuSync to me. You want to be over provisioned as far as range goes, right? So if you're going to fly it within a mile, you want it to have the capacity to go three miles, right? Right. Right. I've got a question for you. Know, if you're if you fly in a you know. A, a, a area with heavy Wi-Fi interference, and you you only want to fly a mile, but you may be behind, you know, uh, buildings or something at that point, and you need that extra, you know, strength to penetrate uh, uh, structures and you penetrate through heavily Wi-Fi infested neighborhoods. So that's a good point, Kelly. So Kelly, one of the things that uh, the Skydio two kind of brought to the forefront was uh, tracking, right, and 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 three dimensional. Uh, obstacle avoidance, etc., and so that got me to thinking about my Mavic 2 Zoom. Well, it has all that, and I never really messed around with it much. So, so I tried it, and it works really good. Is oh, the, are, you, are you talking about? Are you talking about just the um, the where you draw a square around yourself and and it tracks you that way? And it and it and it tracks you now. The Mavic 2, you can lose yourself with it, right? If you duck around a tree or something. It, it, it can lose you, but as long as you uh, stay, I mean, it, it'll it follow you around just like the Skydio will, really, I mean, uh, and not hit anything, and, and, and in fact, it's even a little freer, because it'll go lower, It you know, if you, you don't have to take that floor off like you do on the Skydio. Yeah, yeah, once you take that floor off the Skydio, I, I have a quick question, though, for you guys on your first Skydio, and, and, and Bill, sorry, we're, we're, we're no, no, we no. out on the Skydio, but uh, I have a quick question. Uh, for you guys with the Skydios, first time I flew it, I took it in the backyard. 
I, I, um, I set it all up, you know, downloaded everything. It took a little while, charged the batteries and, and just wanted to, I, I wasn't even gonna, I wasn't even filming. I was just gonna try it and just kind of get the feel for it. First thing it does is goes up and I don't know why it did this, but it goes up over my house. Like it just kind of took off to a certain distance and then just hovered there. And that's, that was such an unusual thing for me because most drones, whether it's DJI or otherwise, when you when they when you hover, they just hover. But this one just decided this is where I need to be, and it went there. Didn't hit anything, you know, and it was still within line of sight. It wasn't even that far. But as it's heading toward my house, I had a freak out moment. But then I realized, okay, it's got cameras. It's not going to hit the house, right? That would be a big fail. And it just was up over my roof and just kind of hung out there. And then you mentioned, um, I think actually this is the first time I was using the the um, I was first time I was using the beacon. So right. I, I had to push the beacon and kind of bring it back in to get it back down. It's it is hard with the beacon to bring it to you and get it to land. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. Yeah, it, it does. And what what you what you experience, Kelly, is when you use the beacon to take off, it immediately goes into a mode where it's looking for somebody to track or something to track. Yeah, that's why it went up because it it, it must have not saw anything right away and immediately went up searching. Like I've seen, like the first time I used the beacon, my, my very first flight of the beacon, it like couldn't find me for a while. Like I, I had to really walk around, but once it had me, it had me, but it was like, hey, I'm right here. You know, all over, up and down, you know, looking. And like you said, you know, I would been worried with any of the drone, but I knew, well, there's no thin wire for this to hit or some thin three, three branch. It's not going to hit anything big. So I wasn't worried, but again, like you said, I'm running around like this and eventually saw me. I was good to race play. I found Kelly, the best combination is to use the beacon and the phone both because flying that thing with a phone is really nice. Like, I mean, you know, you, you've, you've, I know you've probably flown two drones in the passive phone. It's a bad experience. Yeah, it's usually, usually not that great. Yeah, it's a good experience here, but if you're using the combination of beacon and the phone, you still you have extra controls on the phone, you know, and you can still use the beacon simultaneously at the same time. But and I think it actually tracks you better if you have the phone in your pocket, like if the phone's on your person. Yeah, right. You have you have you know, basically you got you know, a backup or whatever. It has two ways to, to track you. Well, like Billy Kyle's very first video where he's skateboarding, you know, th you know along that path, he goes that bridge. He's got a combination of both. You know, and, and and I think that is the best combination to to have both close hand. But the control, I mean, Mark's always getting pointed. But the controller, um, you know, outside of the range issues, a lot of people not going to control. But they're all die in the wool DJI guys. I, I Mark's had both of the Anaki, so we're we're used to the controller. So it wasn't as big as a hurdle as people who've never flown anything but a DJI drone before. In fact, you know, Billy's recent video where he's flying the Altel, and he's kind of. Pinging it. A lot of people got on him saying that he's too used to DJI. And I think that's part of the problem with the Anafi and the controller with the Skydio, that it's, it's people that have never flown a non DJI drone before and they're just not used to the controller. But but Marcus has a point, and I've talked too much. You, you're just fine, Ron. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to make a quick point is if you, you guys really want to have fun and talking, you talking about the, the drone going over the roof of your house, Kelly. Uh, so I made a, a video where I mowed my lawn, my backyard with the Skydio following me around. Oh, nice. You want to get the attention of your neighbors. <laughs> Let me tell so, you. So it, it followed you around while you were mowing the whole time. Yeah. So, and so it, battery life, uh, like, like were you able to get the whole yard done? Before the whole, I got, was able to get the whole yard done and it nice. was probably, I don't know. We had plenty of battery even after that. Uh, but what was fun was watching the gymnastics of the drone. Yeah. Uh, as you made it, boy, it would zoom out over this way. And and just like you, what you said, Kelly, of course, all of us were used to being afraid of, of obstacles. Flyways, yeah, yeah. And it was flying between trees and over everybody's roof. And, well, and here's, my, here's my here's my follow me story, okay? Back in the day, this is when I had the had the Mavic Pro uh, and the Spark went to the went to the soccer field. And what I did was I put the Spark up at about 150. I put the Mavic Pro at 100. And I actually had the Spark track the Mavic Pro. And it did really well. I mean, for about for about 150 feet, it did real well. And then I just started to do a gradual turn. It lost it. Lost it, yeah. As soon as I did that gradual turn, it was gone. It, it, it wasn't anywhere to be found. Um, real quick, before, before we wrap things up tonight, I just wanted to get – 
your take on remote ID? I know that a lot of people have been talking about it, um, you know, and it looks like it's going to come to fruition probably next year sometime. And, you know, it, it, it kind of feels like, you know, we kind of, you know, we went through an exercise of futility in, in putting in our comments, Kelly. I just wanted to get some of your thoughts on that and what, what you thought. You're on the hot seat, Kelly. Yeah, I know, I know. And and it's funny because I'm I'm I don't get worked up about this as as I think people a lot of people do, but I, I, I think that we need to do something, right? I, I like the license plate analogy that uh, Schulman um, from DJI used. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, it is like having a license plate. Now the stickers with our with our uh, ID numbers is also like a license plate. When it's flying and it's that tiny, that doesn't really do much good. So you need a license plate on your drone so that you can be held accountable. I think what's the problem is that um, there's a lot of things they're not thinking about that could be solved for. And it seems like there is something at play that we can't really, oh, hey guys, check this out. Dude, go, go and buy on a, on a one wheel. <laughs> oh, um, nice. wow. so, so there's a lot of things in account right now that that um, seem like stuff's going on behind the scenes, like the selection of the companies that are going to be involved. Like, who who decided that? You know, um, and and then also, what happens to everything that's outdated? Is there a grandfather clause for existing um, hardware, or is there going to be an easy fix for us? I mean, that's that's another big question. Home built drones. You know, does everybody have to subscribe to a service? There's so many there's so many possible gotchas with the current plan that I don't think it's really gonna help the industry. I don't think it's gonna help innovation. I don't think it's gonna help kids with STEM, right? Which is what this country needs right now. I don't wanna get political, but we need more kids doing science, you know? Yes. And, and so um, it, this discourages those things. I think we have to do something, but but this is not, this, this is not the right approach. Is well, you know, I, I agree with you 100%, you know, and I kind of like what DJI had proposed because it was using a, leveraging existing technologies and not really going to cost because, you know, less dependent on less dependent on people paying for a service. Exactly. You know, you know, it's like, you know, the last thing I think, you know, for me, I'm all for I'm all for safety. And I don't know if you saw recently and I had to take it down because so many people were posting the videos when the uh, USAF Thunderbirds were in Detroit. Some oh, yeah, yeah. had a drone up there and you could see I was like, hello. I'm like. Come on, how, how stupid can you be? Okay, so yeah, I'm all in favor of something like this, and, and I like Brendan Schulman's analogy. He's a great guy, and and I would love to get him on sometime. You know, you know, it's it's like you know with license plates. Yeah, we all need them. Okay, but you know what? I don't want my neighbor, you know, you know, uh, two blocks down the street, you know, to know when I'm up in the air and all that stuff. And you know, he may he may be a redneck. Pardon, pardon, pardon that. I don't want to offend anybody. You know, he may be of the, of the variety, you know, he's going to pull out his gun and try to shoot my drone down. You know, it's like, or well, I, anyway. I, I would say, so, so I actually differ in opinion on that bill. And, and where I differ is I feel like him knowing, you know, knowing you and knowing that you're flying, it, I've made it a point to tell all of my neighbors in, in the media, like, like three houses in every direction, um, that I do drone reviews and that, you mm -hmm. know, I do this not, not for a living necessarily, but that it's part of, part of, and also I'm part 107 certified. Uh, I, I fly for work. Like, like I'm the drone guy at our video production company. So, so typically, you know, and I have a few curmudgeons. I mean, I live in Texas, right? So there, there's a few rednecks around here, but the point, the point is that I feel like by, um, by letting them know, now I know what you're saying is, you know, that automatic beacon thing, but I think people are more afraid of what they don't know. So if, if he right. to know, hey, that's Bill flying up there. Okay, it's all good. You know, that's not not somebody. Yeah. Else. See, so I think I, I, you you bring up a good point. You know, because you know my, my neighbors all know that. You know, and, and I've let them know that. I'm like you. You know, I've told them like, hey, you know, I have a drone channel on YouTube. You know, you're gonna see it up every now and then. You like know, and subscribe. That, that, that kind of thing. Ron, Marcus, you have any have any thoughts about this? Uh, uh, I know I know Marcus does. Yeah, so here's here's my worry is is listen, I am fortunate to be surrounded by a ton of class G airspace, and in fact, I seldom, if ever, fly in any kind of controlled airspace. Uh, so I don't even need to get permission because it just there's no need to. There's plenty of places to to fly that you don't have to be. There great places to fly, and I always wonder, well, you know, whose business is it when I'm out there in class G airspace? Out in the middle of nowhere, really, 
And my concern is how is this connection going to work if I'm out there and I'm out of cell phone range? Is, is my drone still going to be able to take off, et cetera? So all those are open questions that I have a concern about. Uh, like all of us here, I own a number of drones. If we have to subscribe to a service, do I have to do it for each one of those drones? Or is it just a single subscription? Uh, those kind of things are concerns. But uh, but but to your point, Kelly, what, what I think I'm I'm absolutely fine. If I am flying in controlled airspace, it is the government's business what I'm doing, and it is their business where I'm flying and and how I'm flying it. Outside yeah, if, you're flying, if the Thunderbirds are going over and you're putting a drone in the air, you, you deserve you deserve what you get. Yeah, 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 exactly right. Yeah. So uh, in any case, uh, it, we just it's, there's just too many unknowns now to really have a full opinion yet. So uh, yeah. Anyway, Ron. Well, anyway. I'll, I'm going to cede my time on the uh, on, on on the that issue. And, uh, and, and and put Kelly in the hot seat again, just real quick here. Uh, Kelly, what do you think of the lawsuit Altel has going against uh, DJI about the locking uh, uh, propeller mechanism? Do you, you think it will ground DJI uh, this year in, in any way? Well, okay, so, so two things on that. Number one, uh, Aldrin uh, from Flight Path just put out a video, I think it was today. By the way, that guy's pace, man. He puts out the videos so oh, often. My head spin. I, I, I talked to him pretty, he and I are, he have gotten to be friends and oh my God, I'm like, dude, would you just slow down? You're, you're, you're making me feel so guilty for not publishing content. But, but, <laughs> but, but he's a great guy. He put out a video about, the, um, about that about the fact that the new air, I don't know if you guys know this, you can put the, the, the pusher on the puller side and you put the puller on the pusher side, meaning the one with the white stripe, you can put it on the black or vice versa. And he, he kind of said, I wonder if that has something to do with the patent on, on it, uh, number one. And then number two, uh, and I'm hesitant to share this, but I, it's not really private, but uh, I was asked um, by DJI recently to use the my Amazon affiliate account and um, versus their affiliate account. And they used to always push me to really use their affiliate account. I don't know if you guys do DJI affiliate, but yeah. it's a great program. They pay really well. Um, you know, mm -hmm. like like the money comes, but but I got I got asked by you know the guy I work with over there, hey, can you use our Amazon store? Maybe they're just trying to promote it more. Maybe it's a shipping thing, but also wondered if maybe it had something that it was kind of the timing was a little bit, you know, so so maybe it's like through Amazon they can import these things. I don't know. But, but I, I, I honestly, I feel like this is going to blow over. I mean, Autel, we, we need the competition, and I don't think this is going to change anything, any major course. We talked about it last night on Xeno Nation. I'm glad Ron brought that up. And, you know, and, and my thinking, Kelly, is this. Uh, DJI's legal team will have Autel's legal team um, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then, and then, and then martinis afterwards. I mean, it's, like, it's like, you know, they're trying to make some way and I can understand I'll tell, you know, they're probably cash strapped. They probably need to get, get infusion of cash because, you know, before, before, um, CES, they had to get money from the parent company over in China to be able to get their booth at CES this year. I mean, they, wow. they were there cash strapped. So, I mean, you know, it's, you know, I, I think it's going to blow over. Like you said, I really do. Guys, let's have some closing thoughts. Um, you know, Kelly, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you to, to all, all three of you guys and also to everyone that tuned in tonight. You had a good turnout tonight. I'm, I'm uh, impressed. A lot of good comments in there. And sorry, I was kind of bouncing back and forth between the stream yard and the actual chat. So um, so just appreciate being on here. I, I, I don't hang out with you guys as much as I'd like to. So um, I appreciate the invitation. And I will definitely keep you guys apprised of what's going on for spin-up because I think that um, this year, I really think we have a chance to touch a lot of people, to reach a lot of people. I'm trying to come up with, with um, how, how we make it personal, as I said before. So if people have ideas on how to, how to you know, I, I, think, I think maybe doing some, obviously some live Q&A is going to be great. Doing some polls, doing some pre-submitted questions from, from viewers might be good. I don't know. I'm, I'm coming up with these ideas. But if you have ideas on ways that we can kind of bridge that connection that we won't have because we won't be in person, please send them to me. And again, thank you for letting me be on. Absolutely, Kelly. Marcus. 
Yeah, so I do want to mention our, our, the friend of all of our shows, uh, Lauren Donauer, asked me to mention uh, Drones for Good, and uh, that is coming up on June 7th. And I know that's meetups uh, all over the country, and I know Romeo Dersher from DJI is involved with that as well. I put a link in the chat to the Drones for Good uh, International Facebook page. Nice. And uh, yeah, so, uh, and then uh, as far as uh, spin up, Kelly, I'm really so looking forward to that. You know, I had, my first spin up was the one this past year. Yeah. And just just like you said, it, well, you just put a face to everybody, all the people that you follow and talk to, well, or look at their videos all the time, and you do finally get to talk to them. So I think you're spot on with putting the uh, personal touch to it. And uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, Thanks for coming on uh, Rotor Talk Live. Hey, can, I, can I ask a quick question? Uh, I just I just popped up on Facebook. Uh, drones for Good International or Drones for Good? Is, is drones there for Good International. Okay. It, it, the web page is Drones for Good International. All right. I, drawn I, hour up in I just requested to join. I just requested to join. They got you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Ron, go ahead. Um, you know, I just I want to thank Kelly for coming on tonight with us, and I want to thank you know all the hard work he's put in at the first two spin ups. And I'm sure this even there's this first one, even though he won't have people there, I'm sure this is going to be a lot of work and time consuming for him. And what I, I want to invite him to when he's got everything you know, lined up and ready, and he's he's ready to put it real hard. You know, I want you to come on Zeno Nation and, and 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 plug everything and let everybody know and you know. We can anything you need to let people know. Come on the show, and we'll you know we'll devote a show just to. Last year we couldn't. I was trying to get you to come on for the other spin, but I got Steve Parker to come in your place, and he did a g great job of laying everything out for everybody. And Steve did such a such a great job promoting. But we're going to have you on this year to hundred uh, percent. And Steve, and have Steve on with you. We'll have you both on the the promote the virtual spin up. Love it. So. Gentlemen, thank you. And Kelly, um, you know, I, I ditto everything um, Ron and Marcus said. Uh, it's always a treat to have you on. And, um, Gosh, you know, and, 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 and I'll go back. I'll go back to this. When I first started out, my first two comments on my on my intro video were you and Kelly. Can you who was the other one? Do you know who it is? I, I know you know him because you sent you sent him. He was one of your subscribers of the month. Uh, was it Chris Hope? No. Uh, who was it? California. Was it Steve Carpenter? No. Was it Rick Halber? No. Uh, well, no, Rick's not in California. Uh, Rick is in California. I, I, you got to tell me. Um, the, uh, I'll give you another clue. He does a lot of radio control cars. Was it Donnie from Don. uh, from uh, Big Drone Flyer? Oh, 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 yeah. first. You were first, and Donnie was second on there, and I'll never forget that. Okay, you know, I have I have never actually spoken to Donnie in person. We chat all the time on comments. We chat all the time on Instagram. Uh, I, I he was he was my actually my very first when I came up with the idea of subscriber of the month. He was the first one. I sent him a spark. Uh, it was like it was like actually a yeah. It was not too long after the spark had come out, and I, he's he's a great guy. I think that he um, it looks like he takes care of a lot of kids and he has a lot of responsibility. And, you know, so mm -hmm. I try to support him wherever I can. His channel's grown pretty well. I, he, I, I, Donnie has some health issues, but the good news is Donnie got the Mavic Air to it. So, um, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I did see that. Yeah. I was, I, so, so he and I were your first two comments. Yeah. The first two comments on my intro video, which was my first video that I posted. And, and wow. you know, th th to me, I mean, that really says it all because. You know, one of the things, and I will say this, is, you know, one of the reasons I, I, I'll say, you know, I, I, lo I look up to your channel and I look up to you is you handle everything on an even keel. Um, you know, you're not, you're not here, you're not there, you know, you're, you're right in an even keel. Can I and, go get my wife? I need her to hear this. <laughs> you can you can be recording. Uh, and and I, I I hope somebody says that about me someday. But but no, you really are. You're you're level headed. You're an even keel. And I want to thank you not only for you know what you do on, online, but also what you do offline. You know, we've had some phone calls before. You've given me a lot of great advice, and I've followed it. Um, you've given me an incredible book, which I really enjoyed. Good. And you know, I'm looking for somebody to pass that book on to because it really it, it's it's made a difference. And you know, oh, right, it, it's right. just like, you know, as, as Marcus started out and saying, you know, 
with you know with everything that's going on right now you know you know let, let's be kind to each other let's you know treat you know mr rogers three rules for success in life or be kind be kind and be kind and you know and, and to me that's what it's all about and um you know most of the subscribers most of the viewers here are, are in agreement with that uh you know we've had we have some great people that support all all of us here and, and I think we're very thankful for that. And again, Kelly, thank you so much for that. And don't, don't forget to pump First Friday for Kelly. And First Friday's coming up because that's going to be not this Friday, but a week from Friday. So make sure. Uh, actually, two that the weeks. First? Yeah, because it's 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 actually June June uh, this year. This this time it ends up on June fifth, but I might do it on June twenty second because I might not be able to do it on June fifth. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, but, but just, yeah, thank you for the plug and everybody who's watching. Um, if you did enter my contest for the, I am giving away a Mavic mini. Um, so if you did oh, enter the contest yeah. for the Mavic mini, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give it away that night. So that'll be the, definitely a reason to tune in. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, you know, the, the message out there to everybody is, is to be safe and, and, you know, uh, j just follow what your government is telling you to do. Um, you know, we're getting through this. You know, we're, we're things are looking better in, in most of the areas around the world. Just yeah. use, you know, common sense, guys, and 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 be smart and be safe and and just you know just just continue to do it. Again, Kelly, thank you so much for coming on, Ron and Marcus. Just want to let everybody know, coming up in the next few weeks, I have several great people that we're going to be talking to here. Okay, you know, n household names as far as the drone community is concerned. So the next several weeks and, and somebody who I've never had on the channel before, but you guys know he's fantastic. I think we'll all, we'll, you'll all enjoy him. So stay tuned the next several weeks. They're, they're all be coming up. So again, everybody, thank you so much. And, oh yeah, go make sure you watch the uh, uh, Philly and Ron show coming up immediately on Philly drone life. I didn't want to forget that. I got a plug in for you, Ron. So everybody take care and we'll see you next time.